Hey guys how all of you beautiful people are doing? And yes this is the next part of, life as Goku. Chris Lander is the definition of average, average student going to an average school living an average life until one day a trunk kissed him a little too hard and he is thrown through the void. When he wakes up he finds out that he is in the body of Son Goku. With his new life, he will be anything but average and rise to the top until he becomes a god. So let's start without any delay. The fight was raging on in full intensity when Android 21 joined the fray. She was stronger than Cell many folds and started to pummel on 2 Kale. However, like the person before her, she couldn't defeat her and only got her angrier. How much potential does this Saiyan have? Does, she have more than me? Her power just keeps increasing with only rage as her fuel source. Both Cell and Android 21 have tried many times to absorb her as it was the only thing that seemed would stop her, but it seemed as if she had enough instinct to dodge and recognize that she would lose if was hit by those types of moves. The only real thing they could do at this point was to suppress Kale with their power, but that wouldn't last long. Cell broke off from the engagement leaving 21 to fight for herself so that he could take a breather. That was when he remembers that he had extra comrades that could help him. Android 17 and 18. Stop loitering around and watching us fight. Get down here and help us. Both siblings furrowed their brows. They might have been comrades mere moments before, but that was only for killing Hash 20. Quite frankly, they didn't like the tone that was being projected to them. Throughout the entire time I have been with you, you gloated about how perfect and strong you are. Surely you do not need our help. Are you sure 17? The pitiful man seems to be struggling against the girl. Even with his master on his side, he still can't win. Maybe you aren't as strong as you say. They have shown the side that they were on. Pure neutral machines. Cell glowered at the two individuals and was about to spout something harshly at them to get them in line. Maybe a quick beating would do the trick. Cell warped behind 17 before he could react. They didn't actually think he would attack them. A straight chop was heading towards 17's neck, one with enough power that might decapitate him. Another hand stopped this approach by the wrist. He couldn't pull away so he looked at the perpetrator angrier than ever at how powerless he's been feeling. What was the point in power if he couldn't even kill a bunch of weaklings? His heart sank when he saw who it was. It was Goku. He was already in his Super Saiyan form to boot. Android 17 and 18 backed up when their reaction caught up and saw the exchange between the two fighters. Goku punched Cell back down to the ground from the rock pillar and he crashed into the dirt. Cell. Now he is in his perfect form. I won't say thank you whoever you are. Cell, since you saved us from those tubes and now tried to kill us, I would say we are even. All bridges are now burnt. Android 17 thanked Goku before returning his attention to Cell. From neutral to resentful were the Android's attitude to Cell. 18 silently agreed by brushing her hair to the side and nodding at the statement. The androids are now out. Well, it wasn't that hard to convert them to our team. Now how did Kale's transformation get triggered? Goku looked over at the pile of dirt that was being thrown around and saw Kale actually looking exhausted by herself. He heaved a sigh of relief that she hadn't transformed into a Super Saiyan yet. If she did, he didn't know if he could stop her. Looking at the other end of the dirt cloud he had to rub his eyes once or twice, or thrice to fully believe who she was fighting. Looking as tired and roughed up as Kale, her pants and small parts of her bra were torn able to see the skin underneath. Android 21 
But how? What did I miss in just one day? Dash. Target has disappeared. Relocating key signature, key signature match approximately north. Android 16 activated his boosters on his feet to accelerate his flight and was about to take off. Oh no, you don't. Gohan came flying in with a roundhouse kick aimed at the tall man's head. He easily blocked it with his hand and his eyes slowly trained on the young boy. Don't forget about me. Sixteen in fact, did forget about her. Using all of her body, she tackled Sixteen in the stomach. Sixteen skidded back a few feet with his feet creating a line on the floor. He eventually stopped and didn't look phased. He grabbed that cyan with his other hand and he threw both of them to the ground. Their heads collided in a clumsy fashion sprouting huge bumps. Oh 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 oh. Bula, why is your head so hard? Maybe it's because of all those books you read. You dunderhead. Your head is strong because you would be stupid enough to put weights on it and train your forehead like that. Android 16 cracked a small smile at the little exchange the kids had with each other. He didn't have time to enjoy himself. Mother would be mad he didn't finish his mission. Flying up once again, he was about to take off. They both saw he was about to depart and without any words, rose to stop him. Bulla jumped towards once again but this time had two little cup-like key structures on her feet. Came Haim Ha. Gohan launched a Came Haim Ha not at Android 16 but at Bulla. The waves of Ki, when close to Bulla's feet, split off into two and started to propel Bulla to unimaginable speeds. She was safe from the powerful attack with her own Ki structures acting like rocket thrusters. This time, 16 didn't just move a few feet but crashed into a sanctuary wall when Bulla's rock hard head impacted his stomach. Ow. I hate doing that. Next time it will be your turn. It will probably hurt them more with your harder head. Andriode 16 got up and started an analysis of the two children. Both of them, nine year old Cyan bodies with that much power. With him staring at the two so much, Gohan thought it was him being confused at their amazing plan. You shouldn't underestimate us, mister. Us working together isn't just simple multiplication or addition. It is much more. Such coordination is on par with the Android 17 and 18 pair. Coupled with their power at such a young age, they were a real threat. Maybe even more than Goku himself. New objective, eliminate Saiyan kids. Instead of wanting to head off to Goku, this mission was the priority in his mind. Tinkan is finally ready to fight us. Let's show him our one year worths of hard work Gohan. Yeah. Dash. Goku. You seem to nearly ruin all my plans whenever I see your ugly mug. You also seem stronger than before, what did you do? You know what? It doesn't matter. I will destroy you from the humiliation from before. Prepare yourself. Cell. Hearing the shriek from his master had him jump out of his skin. Now is not the time for that. Get this monkey off of me. At the fight between the two female powerhouses. It wasn't looking so hot for the pink one. With an upper hand at first, it was slowly and brutally lessened until Kale started landing real dirty hits creating large bruises and cuts. Cell looked between the new arrival and the muscular giant and an ingenious plan started to form in his mind. There was only one way with defeating Kale at this point and it wasn't with force. Looking around the battlefield, he finally spotted the situation that triggered her transformation. He slapped Krillin on the back to get his eyes off of the female's sweating bodies as they fought. Wake up Senzu delivery. What are you slacking off for? Don't you have a model girlfriend or something? 
Those two over there need senzu beans, I know you have some, and I don't want to use mine. Hey. That hurt. You got to appreciate all the body types. Not like someone like you would know about. Krillin grumbled and headed towards his fallen comrades and gave them a senzu bean. Now that that is taken care of, what what next? A fist to the face apparently. Kale's huge fist caved in Goku's face forcing him to fly off in the distance. Ha ha. I told it would work. What did I say, master? Now let's wait for all of them to fight and tire out and gobble them all up. She was glad that the brute was off her back, but she had a feeling that they shouldn't linger more than necessary. Retreating and gathering more power seemed like the play. What? But master this is the perfect OPP. Shut up Cell and do what I say. Let's go. Without him waiting to respond, she left as quickly as she could. One could tell how badly battered she was by how her flight stuttered and her aura was weak. Cell looked disgruntled being told against his will so harshly. He looked at Goku one last time with hatred and then fled to follow his master. Goku flew a kilometer before he stopped himself. Kale was going on a rampage trying to take a bite out of everyone she saw. 17, 18, Tien, and Yamsha were fighting her and stood no chance with how they were going down like flies. Sigh, why do I have to do everything? Wait, I am the protagonist. Man, being the protagonist is hard. With that, he flew back to the battle. What everyone fails to understand, understandably, is that the way to defeat Kale is not to keep fighting her, but to placid her. He had a perfect way, but first. Hey big, fat, and ugly. Over here. He had to provoke her. What? Kale was eating them alive right now. He needed to distract her. And the mission was accomplished when Kale turned her head to look at the aggressor. Just in the nick of time too because it looked like she was going to lodge her fist inside Tien's stomach. Ah. Such an obvious charge didn't make it any less deadly. Goku dodged and weaved around the mindless brute waiting for Krillin. Unlike the ones before him who tried to fight her, he put all of his focus on dodging. With his intensive training with spirit and ki, moving efficiently with no redundant movement was an afterthought. Here you go, eat up. Krillin force-fed the two downed scions. Tossing the beans in their mouths, it didn't take long for them to wake up from their nap. Oh, what happened? Where am I? Cauliflower woke up first with Vegeta close behind. The ground was still shaking from Kale decimating the earth and rocks around her. These shakes woke the two from their groggy state and forced them to look over in that direction. Holy CR asterisk P. Who is that? So muscular and what is this key? Destructive and dangerous. A new enemy. No, wait. That is not a new enemy. Well, kinda. That is Kale. She turned all crazy and mad after you guys got your asterisks handed to you. It didn't take long for them both to give Krillin a death stare that could rival Sheesh's. Sheesh, these scions and their pride. By the way, Cauliflower, Goku wanted me to tell you to help him out. I don't know how you can but, he said so. Me. Okay. Cauliflower flew out to meet Goku while Vegeta was pondering in his head. Why not me? Dash. Your teamwork was impeccable, however, that is not enough. Gohan and Bulla were looking worse for wear. They have been going at it full force for minutes but Sixteen didn't look tired at all. Well, makes sense since he is an android. We are not done yet. Both of them ran up, jumped, and both aimed an uppercut at each cheek. 
an easy enough counter 16 thought. He put up his hands and tried to grab their small hands as they went up. When he felt the skin on his left hand, it felt right. All part of his calculations. But when he didn't feel the skin on his right hand, it caught him off guard a little. Off balanced when the symmetrical attack didn't get blocked by the symmetrical counter. Gohan actually double backed by releasing a small burst of ki from his hand propelling him away. Using this momentum, he launched an incredibly high speed kick on 16's hips to force him off balance. Once off his balance, Bulla used the grip 16 had on her hand like a monkey bar and flipped up towards him to kick him on the chin. This made 16 loosen his grip and stumble back. Gohan didn't lose his chance and made a key rope, much like the one he uses for his tornado, and tied his feet together. 16 fell over with a big metal clunk. Doubling down, Bulla launched her own rope and tied his torso together trapping his arms. 16 as usual didn't have any emotions as this was taking place. Remaining in the fixed position, the rocket below his feet helped him stand up to face the two Saiyans who were still holding out their hands to keep the ropes stabilized. The two of you have amazing teamwork, but there is one major flaw in all of it. You do not have enough firepower. There is no point in the ability to work together if you do not come out on top. Android 16 started to tense his appendages straining the ropes restraining him. He started to stretch them making Gohan and Bulla rapidly lose key just to hold on for another second. What does this guy eat for breakfast? Probably nails and stuff. With no milk. With no milk. No wonder. If you two are done joking around, let's end this. Behind 16 was another that they have all forgotten was on the lookout with him. Piccolo was up with no bruises or anything of the like as he was before. Next to him was Dendi cowering behind him. He presumably healed him to help with the situation. Piccolo looked like he was nearly finished with his signature move, the special beam cannon. 16 saw the spike in key previously but did not worry about it since Piccolo's power of before couldn't damage him too much. You probably think I am the same as before you garbage can. Let me tell you. Organic organisms, especially the ones of Namkians isn't one to look down upon. Piccolo's key shot up tenfold when the special beam cannon was complete. Such a big miscalculation forced 16 to do a sweep in the vicinity to see the anomaly. What he noticed was that there were four key signatures. Weren't there five before? If the kid's firepower is still lacking, let me be their replacement for now. Special Beam Cannon The swirly beam of power dashed its way straight towards 16's stomach. It pierced right through gutting the android spilling metallic parts everywhere. Bulla and Gohan released their ropes and started to pant heavily. If 16 survived this, there is no way that they would win. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. 16's eyelids closed and even his voice had the robotic shutdown effect. Only one thing would suffice as a celebration. Asterisk bump asterisk. The two gave each other a fist bump. A fist bump of victory. Dash. Kale, calm down, it's me. Your friendly neighborhood scion. Goku was still playing a dodging game with Kale that getting quite boring. Straightforward moves were easy to dodge and predict. Sensing another key signature, and one who he was familiar with approaching him he could finally put an end to her rampage. Over here Cauliflower. Goku stretched out his hands and let out a burst of ki. This ki wasn't strong but blanketed everything before him pushing Kale back a little bit to give him some space. He did this just as Cauliflower landed next to him to help him out in any way possible.
Should I turn Super Saiyan like him? Would he be surprised? With two Super Saiyans, we could Cal. Her thoughts were interrupted when Kale lurched forward as angry as could be going towards Goku. Her tunnel vision didn't even register Cauliflower there. Goku grabbed Cauliflower off of her feet by hips and held her like an animal. Shoving Cauliflower in front of him, her face stopped Kale's fist that was about to cave her in. Mere inches away from death. Goku took a little peek from behind her and the instant he did so, the other fist went past Cauliflower to hit Goku. He hid behind his shield once more and decided peeking wasn't such a great idea. Ah. It was as if punching Cauliflower was virtually impossible as Kale desperately tried to get past her and punch the guy behind her. Kale, calm down a bit and let's talk. Her voice resonated in Kale's mind a little bit making her a little more sane but it didn't go all the way. She kept swinging wildly. You wouldn't want to hurt this pretty face would you? Goku capitalized on her crush on Cauliflower and did a little jab. Everyone knew that Kale liked Cauliflower except for Cauliflower herself of course. Peace. Smile. Sell it. Cauliflower rolled her eyes and forced a smile. This seemed to calm her more and her movements started to get more sluggish. Now hit her with it Cauliflower. Finish her. Say you love her. What? Why would I say that? I I like you. Just say it. Like you would a friend or sister or something. Cauliflower was flustered that she had to do something like that to her long-time bestie. But she trusted Goku, Goku knows best after all. Here it goes. I I love you K Kale. Super effective. Critical hit. Lightning struck Kale's mind and her muscles started to shrink. Getting smaller and smaller, she ripped clothes that stretch didn't seem like they would fit her anymore. After reverting back to her old form, she started to walk as if she was dizzy until she fell down eating a fistful of dirt. Who knew this monster's weakness was an arrow from Cupid? Everyone. Everyone did. Kale. Cauliflower went up to the down Kale and picked her up. Checking her breathing, she was indeed still alive. She let out a small sigh of relief at the intense situation. K Carrot, we have to bring her back to check if she is okay. Sure, go to Bulma before me. I'll check the situation here. Cauliflower nodded her head and flared her aura up and flew away. Such a crazy situation that no one knew what to do with making her nervous for Kale's well-being. Goku flew over to where the other Z fighters were to get an update on the situation. Vegeta already left when he saw Kale transforming back while the androids were just off to the side brushing the dirt that they accumulated during the short fight. Yeah, so this happened. After getting the information from Krillin he really thought about the situation. It makes more sense that it was Android 21 was the culprit that matched the description. I should have known honestly. From the account of what Krillin got from Cauliflower, the people were still alive and were being continuously robbed of their key. That's probably what that machine was. The other Z fighters saw that they had nothing more to do started leaving one by one. Goku was also about to leave and check how the kids were but the androids stopped them. Yeah, I feel way too slimy and grimy. Ah, uh, sure. Just go to Capsule Corp and tell them that Goku sent you. Bulma should have some good clothes. Thanks. With that. They dashed off to Capsule Core headquarters. Such a weird and unusual encounter. Goku put two fingers on his forehead, when he felt the two kids as vibrant as ever, he smiled and whispered away. Dash. You two kids got more powerful than ever. Ah. Uh. Uncle Piccolo. P. 
Piccolo fell down on one knee panting with sweat dripping down continuously. Two ran up to him to see what was wrong. It's all right, I just fused with Kami. Using so much ki drained my body a bit. I'll be fine in a little bit. You were amazing Uncle Piccolo. The way you dramatically started talking even though it was entirely unnecessary was amazing too. You. Yeah. You were like Namkians shouldn't be looked down upon, and stuff. It was super cool with the drool from your mouth. W what? Piccolo put his hand where his mouth was but he didn't feel anything. Just before he was about to explode, Goku popped out of nowhere. Sup. How's it going? The two kids instantly ran behind Goku for protection against the big bad wolf. Piccolo cooled his anger for now but vowed to get those rascals at a later date. Whoa well, you did a number on 16. Hey Piccolo, did you help? Last time I saw you were passed out like you had a blackout. It was quite sad honestly. Ah, you Saiyans drive me crazy. Let's go Dendi, these Saiyans can handle themselves. Piccolo stormed out of the hallway with Dendi hurrying behind him. He didn't forget to say goodbye to his friends before he left. What should we do with that guy? Buller pointed at the downed 16 with a medium-sized hole drilled in his stomach. Hum, honestly I am surprised you won leaving him in such good condition to boot. Let's carry him to the house. Maybe even fix him up. Fix him up. But why? He was so mean. Oh you should have noticed too Gohan, he isn't mean. I guess. Goku assumed what happened in the game is also happening here. Android 16 was reprogrammed to help 21 but instead of helping her control her evil side, she was already corrupted before 16 was reprogrammed making it so that 16's purpose is to just help her. With Bulma's help, they can probably return him back to his old self. Do we have to carry him? Can't we use instant teleportation? It's so much better. Oh just hush, we can't use instant transmission when coming back to see your mothers, let's just go through the front door. Come on, pick him up. Let's go. Ah, this is going to do a number on my hair. Not like it was good to start with. Dash. Stupid. 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 This wasn't supposed to turn out like this. Everything isn't going how it's supposed to be. 21 punched the metal wall that surrounded her and cell. Her fist buried inches deep in the metal wall finding dirt on the other side. She was still in her pink transformed state. Her eyes read near insanity from the situation that unfolded. You. What happened back there? You didn't tell me there was going to be a monster like her as one of our opponents. She kept and getting more powerful with no end in sight. Too many things are happening that is not in the timeline. Goku isn't supposed to be this powerful and to top it off he's supposed to be an idiot. There are new Saiyans everywhere that are too powerful. What is happening? 21 wasn't paying attention at all to the voice behind her too engulfed in talking to herself crazily. He even has a harem swimming with babies. Maybe having more people equal higher competence and power, dash. Hey. Cell was fed up with this crazy woman and her antics. He grabbed her shoulder to get her attention and assert his dominance. The mill iskened that his finger touched her shoulder, she turned in Cell's direction and started to lift him up by the neck. He still had no chance against the overwhelming power that he once again felt since the first time he met her. He started to choke with no air and his eyes turned red as he looked down at the girl. Don't you forget who is in charge here Cell. 
Don't think that I didn't notice you looking a little too free from my chains during that fight back there. Maybe I have been too easy on you. 21 threw Cell on the wall of the lab where he crashed and created a small dent. He had an angry look on his face but quickly had it disappear when 21 looked over in his direction. Let's stay here a while and recoup our strength. We will figure out a plan later. 21 started walking away to her bedroom while thinking to herself. Stronger or not, I will have my way this time. Mark my words Goku. Dash. Honeys, I am home. Goku burst through the door of the Capsule Corp building expecting a warm welcome. However, there was dead silence bringing Goku's mood down a bit. Both of his kids were panting behind him, the lack of ki due to their fight plus carrying the giant hunk of man really got them tired out. We are down here. Bulma's voice echoed across the house entering the ears of the new people. They navigated around the house before they entered the laboratory. In the middle, Kale was getting scanned with various machines hooked up to her. Bulma was reading something on the screen while Cauliflower was nervously biting her nails. The androids were also there for some reason. They were cleaned and had a new set of clothes each. Bulma lent some of her clothes to 18 and some of Goku's to 17. They would be lying to themselves if they said they weren't curious about Kale's special condition. Blending in the background, they didn't bother anyone and kept to themselves. How is it going? Her vitals seem to be stable. I don't know what you want me to look at here, she looks completely fine. Yeah but what if she turns all big and scary again? My poor Kale. Cauliflower insisted Bulma to keep looking. She rolled her eyes at the Cyan's persistence and pretended to look busy looking at the same screen. She is okay, probably has a special composition as a Cyan. We will look at the book later. Be but. Look at her sleeping peacefully, she is fine. Cauliflower conceded defeat that Kale was fine. On another note, Bulma. I need you to fix this guy up. And maybe reprogram him as well. Revealing the kids holding 16 behind him. Bulma who would usually look excited sighed. What am I to you science? Always coming to me when you have problems. It's your fault you are the smart one. True. Bulla come and move Kale to another spot. Bulla went to where Kale was sleeping and with Cauliflower following, went up to her room to lay her down. Gohan put 16 on the table to replace her and soon disappeared as well to play with Bulla. Whoa, 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 reprogram him. He isn't an emotionless machine, you can't just do that. The androids were a little uncomfortable at the situation considering Bulma could technically do that to them as well if Goku wanted to. Don't worry, we are just restoring him back to his old self from what 21 already did. How do you know that? No, he is right. There is some advanced stuff mixed in with some old programming. Like two different handwritings. Programming is not my forte so it will take a while. Home. 16 was pretty nice in the short time that they were together with him. You guys can stay here for a while if you want. We will still be going after 21 and sell after 16 wakes up. I am going to decline for now and stay here with 16 to make sure your wife doesn't do any damage to him. Right 18. You do what you want 17. I on the other hand saw a hot tub on our way over here. I am going to hit up that for a while. Bulma is it okay if I borrow some of your clothes and a towel? Sure, sure. Goku, she she went to her dad's house so I'll be picking her up later tonight. We'll join you cauliflower in bed later. Bulma absentmindedly said yes. 18 walked towards Goku who was near the exit. 
Before she left, she winked at the blonde man and brushed her shoulder on his, and left the room. Kale woke up with a splitting headache. Pain was all she felt and her eyes were blurry, not able to see. After a while, the pain started to subside and her vision slowly came to her. She was back in her room in bed. It was dark outside. She got up slowly trying to remember what happened. She had some fragmented memories but nothing crazy. The only thing she really remembered was when Cauliflower said she loved her, while being held by Goku. She needed to clear her head so she went down to the kitchen to get a glass of water. After chugging it down, she decided to sleep on it. Maybe she was becoming delusional thinking that Cauliflower actually loved her. Passing by Goku's master bedroom, she heard some noises. Sloshing sounds, squishing sounds, and some feminine moans mixed in there as well. She became bright red and leaned in on the door to listen. Listening was not enough, her vagina asked for more to be pleased. Sight was needed. She slightly opened the door, just enough for one eyeball to see inside. What she saw inside was definitely what her vagina craved. The sight of Cauliflower's back going up and down on Goku's dick. Her bouncy ass was going up and down slowly, but the jiggles were enough for Kale to burst. She slipped her hands inside her panties and started going to work. Kale was still a virgin and the visual stimulation of her lifelong crush was too much for her. Her eyes started to flutter up and down as she climaxed with just two fingers. Because of this, her grip on the door started to loosen and her hand started to push on the door. She saw what was happening and wanted to stop it, but the pleasure of her climax sapped all of her strength. She could only watch in horror as the door opened with one hand stretched out and one hand in her pants. Ha! Huh. Cauliflower stopped her slow pace to look back at the door. Maybe it was Bulma coming back from fixing 16 and wanted to join in on the fun. What she met with was definitely something much better. Kale. What are you doing, Otilda? Kale was stunned, shocked. She couldn't move an inch as Cauliflower approached her. Her pussy was dripping from all the passionate sex that she had before. If you were up, you should have told me. You didn't need to surprise me like this. Are you here to join in on the fun? Finally. I always wanted you to join. Cauliflower bit the bottom of her lip unconsciously a little nervous that she would say no. Unbeknownst to her. This only made her look sexier with her naked body and sweat from the workout. Kale nodded slowly not even aware of what she was agreeing to. Cauliflower's eyes lit up with joy as she bent down. She licked up Kale's drool with her little tongue and trailed it all the way up to her lips. Cauliflower kissed those sweet plump lips and Kale kissed back in response. She kissed with everything with her eyes closed. Cauliflower couldn't help but giggle at her anticipation and pulled back. Kale wasn't quite ready for that and kept going forward seeking those luscious lips. He he. Looks like someone is ready to get it down. What was she talking about? Kale followed her gaze to the floor under Kale and what she saw surprised her as well. A copious amount of liquid was escaping her cave hungry for action and it made her incredibly embarrassed. As red as she could get, she weakly got up. W wait this is wrong. SS sorry for interrupting you. I'll be leaving. Whoa, hold your horses there. Cauliflower grabbed Kale's arm as she protested. Kale looked at Cauliflower's pleading eyes. Surely just once. It will be so much fun with you. She couldn't say no, her brain was unable to. Kale shyly nodded her headed. Ecstatic, Cauliflower pulled Kale onto the bed where Goku was waiting. You took so long, it got soft. This is actually perfect. 
Kale let me teach you. Cauliflower pulled Kale and soon enough, their faces were inches away from Goku's long stick. It loomed over Kale and was quite scary, but Cauliflower's voice got her mind back. Look, this is how you get him hard. You just take it in your mouth, make sure you don't use teeth, and use lots of tongue. It gets fun after a while. Cauliflower was taking engulfing half of Goku's dick. She wanted to keep on going but this wasn't a time to get carried away. She needed to teach her discipline. She pulled away and motioned for Kale to try it out. Kale touched the stiff member with caution with the tip of her finger and looked at Cauliflower questionably. She rolled her eyes and looked at her meaningfully. Kale slowly opened her mouth and put the tip inside. Her face tensed and she didn't move. She felt like gagging a bit but held it in. It wasn't like she thought it tasted bad, it tasted better than she imagined, but it was the concept of sucking a dick when all her life she thought she liked women. Well, mostly all things cauliflower. What's wrong? Doesn't it taste good? You can go deeper. Cauliflower was confused as she was sucking on Goku's big balls as to why Kale was still as a rock. Goku rolled his eyes and knew the problem. He pulled his dick from the dry and sandpapery mouth that it inhabited before. I know the solution until she gets used to it. Cauliflower, come here. Cauliflower crawled up to where Goku was giving Kale a pleasing sight. Give me your pelvis. This was new to Cauliflower as she put out her pelvis in front of Goku. Goku channeled some of his spirit control right above Cauliflower's clit. A little circle motion was part of the new technique that Goku used, but it looked vaguely familiar to Cauliflower. Slowly but surely, the small circle of ki started to wiggle and a long stick of flesh that looked exactly like Goku's dick came out of Cauliflower's body. Whoa. What is this? You did this before to yourself but you never told us you can do it to us. Here, now wave that thing in front of Kale. Kale was confused about the cryptic conversation because Cauliflower's big butt was blocking her view, not that she minded. Cauliflower whipped around and the meat almost smacked her in the face. Kale looked at the new object with awe as it was attached to Cauliflower. Her whole stigma of dicks thrown straight out of the window as she gobbled up her prize. T this is pretty hot, you lucky bastard seeing such a great sight every day. Just the perspective of looking down as a girl goes up and down your cock is a sight to behold. Kale was going to town taking most of the dick down her throat. Oh man, this feels so much better. All the pleasure was being transmitted to Goku and he was always open to a new mouth on the scene. Looks like it would feel good, why can't I feel anything? You need to learn spirit control and you will be able to. Quite easy, I can teach you for next time. You hear that Kale? Next time we do this, I will be able to feel everything. Kale just kept sucking like there was no one else in the world besides her and Cauliflower's stick. Of course, it wasn't Cauliflower's but that is what Kale Brain told her. This is hot but it's kinda dull when I can't feel. Goku's dick rammed inside of Cauliflower's pussy giving her voice a different octave. Much better. Two different simulations hit Goku at once. Hot pussy and was gripping every part of his dick asking for a release and a hungry mouth that was waiting to be fed. He was already close due to Kale's mouth so he didn't last too much longer inside Cauliflower's wet cave. Cauliflower speed her up. I am almost there. Kale's head started moving faster as did Goku's hip while ramming Cauliflower. Cauliflower was the first to climax on Goku's rod and because of it, pushed Kale in as deep as she can go. Kale was next and she wet the bed with her juices as it sprayed everywhere. Goku finally released his load pushing Cauliflower face down, laying on the bed. 
Kale was pinned in Cauliflower SS nether regions and the bed but that didn't stop Goku from releasing his load straight into Cauliflower's womb and Kale's stomach at the same time. Both mouths welcomed the seed and gulped it down in no time. Goku got up from Cauliflower allowing her to get up and free Kale. Goku wasn't done however and Kale was going to learn that the hard way. He put Kale on top of Cauliflower with Goku's dick still attached. Cauliflower got the message and inserted the dick inside Kale's awaiting pussy. Kale didn't have time to drink that seed that had her cheeks puffed up before the dick entered her vagina. Oh, you look so cute Kale struggling to drink his seed. Oh right, you are a virgin, oops. Probably should have been gentler. Cauliflower started to move her hips giving Kale a harder time to concentrate on the stuff inside her mouth. Goku on the other hand was liking the fresh meat that his dick was receiving but if you can have more, why not take more? Goku came up behind them and lined up his dick to another hole. One above the norm that was winking at Goku. He accepted the invitation, made sure everything was lubed up and slid on in. With the sudden invasion into her ass, Kale couldn't take it anymore and was about to let the precious drink in her mouth go. Cauliflower saw this and decided to help. She kissed Kale and played around her tongue inside her mouth and drank the excess sperm. Even with it all gone, she kept on kissing to help the poor girl in her first session of sex. It looked a little lonely for Cauliflower so Goku created another one of his long trains right below his previous one. Such a sophisticated technique had no problems with the structure of the human body. He inserted that one in Cauliflower's already leaking pussy giving her a squeal of pleasure. The rhythmic motions and the feeling of being stuffed and kissed by Cauliflower made Kale come again, and again, and again. By the time Goku was feeling the pressure build for him to be done, Kale was already a wreck on the bed. Goku released his load once again in all three holes making Kale feel like a turkey in Thanksgiving. Wow, that was something. I never used three before. Yeah let's keep going. Kale's face of exhaustion became one of regret as she kept on eating Coilfler's juices mixed in with Goku's. This may be a dream but she felt like she was going to die as she enjoyed it. Hey you two, hope you didn't start without us. Bursting into the room, Shishi and Bulma had very little clothing ready to have their nightly session. They were surprised to see a new member, but at the same time, wasn't surprised and went with it. More fun for everyone. Now these two girls mastered their spirit control. Are you two ready for some fun? Everyone smiled at the same time creeping Kale out a little. Coilfler looked down to where Kale was eating her out. We are going to be in for good time. Kale woke up with a splitting headache. Pain was all she felt and her eyes were blurry, not able to see. After a while, the pain started to subside and her vision slowly came to her. She was back in her room in bed. It was dark outside. She got up slowly trying to remember what happened. She had some fragmented memories but nothing crazy. The only thing she really remembered was when Cauliflower said she loved her, while being held by Goku. She needed to clear her head so she went down to the kitchen to get a glass of water. After chugging it down, she decided to sleep on it. Maybe she was becoming delusional thinking that Cauliflower actually loved her. Passing by Goku's master bedroom, she heard some noises. Sloshing sounds, squishing sounds, and some feminine moans mixed in there as well. She became bright red and leaned in on the door to listen. Listening was not enough, her vagina asked for more to be pleased. Sight was needed. She slightly opened the door, just enough for one eyeball to see inside. What she saw inside was definitely what her vagina craved. 
the sight of Cauliflower's back going up and down on Goku's dick. Her bouncy ass was going up and down slowly, but the jiggles were enough for Kale to burst. She slipped her hands inside her panties and started going to work. Kale was still a virgin and the visual stimulation of her lifelong crush was too much for her. Her eyes started to flutter up and down as she climaxed with just two fingers. Because of this, her grip on the door started to loosen and her hand started to push on the door. She saw what was happening and wanted to stop it, but the pleasure of her climax sapped all of her strength. She could only watch in horror as the door opened with one hand stretched out and one hand in her pants. Ha! Huh. Cauliflower stopped her slow pace to look back at the door. Maybe it was Bulma coming back from fixing 16 and wanted to join in on the fun. What she met with was definitely something much better. Kale. What are you doing, Otilda? Kale was stunned, shocked, she couldn't move an inch as Cauliflower approached her. Her pussy was dripping from all the passionate sex that she had before. If you were up, you should have told me. You didn't need to surprise me like this. Are you here to join in on the fun? Finally. I always wanted you to join. Cauliflower bit the bottom of her lip unconsciously a little nervous that she would say no. Unbeknownst to her, this only made her look sexier with her naked body and sweat from the workout. Kale nodded slowly not even aware of what she was agreeing to. Cauliflower's eyes lit up with joy as she bent down. She licked up Kale's drool with her little tongue and trailed it all the way up to her lips. Cauliflower kissed those sweet plump lips and Kale kissed back in response. She kissed with everything with her eyes closed. Cauliflower couldn't help but giggle at her anticipation and pulled back. Kale wasn't quite ready for that and kept going forward seeking those luscious lips. He he. Looks like someone is ready to get it down. What was she talking about? Kale followed her gaze to the floor under Kale and what she saw surprised her as well. A copious amount of liquid was escaping her cave hungry for action and it made her incredibly embarrassed. As red as she could get. She weakly got up. W wait this is wrong. SS sorry for interrupting you. I'll be leaving. Whoa, hold your horses there. Cauliflower grabbed Kale's arm as she protested. Kale looked at Cauliflower's pleading eyes. Surely just once. It will be so much fun with you. She couldn't say no, her brain was unable to. Kale shyly nodded her headed. Ecstatic, Cauliflower pulled Kale onto the bed where Goku was waiting. You took so long, it got soft. This is actually perfect. Kale let me teach you. Cauliflower pulled Kale and soon enough, their faces were inches away from Goku's long stick. It loomed over Kale and was quite scary, but Cauliflower's voice got her mind back. Look, this is how you get him hard. You just take it in your mouth, make sure you don't use teeth, and use lots of tongue. It gets fun after a while. Cauliflower was taking engulfing half of Goku's dick. She wanted to keep on going but this wasn't a time to get carried away. She needed to teach her discipline. She pulled away and motioned for Kale to try it out. Kale touched the stiff member with caution with the tip of her finger and looked at Cauliflower questionably. She rolled her eyes and looked at her meaningfully. Kale slowly opened her mouth and put the tip inside. Her face tensed and she didn't move. She felt like gagging a bit but held it in. It wasn't like she thought it tasted bad, it tasted better than she imagined but it was the concept of sucking a dick when all her life she thought she liked women. Well, mostly all things cauliflower. What's wrong? Doesn't it taste good? You can go deeper. 
Cauliflower was confused as she was sucking on Goku's big balls as to why Kale was still as a rock. Goku rolled his eyes and knew the problem. He pulled his dick from the dry and sandpapery mouth that it inhabited before. I know the solution until she gets used to it. Cauliflower, come here. Cauliflower crawled up to where Goku was giving Kale a pleasing sight. Give me your pelvis. This was new to Cauliflower as she put out her pelvis in front of Goku. Goku channeled some of his spirit control right above Cauliflower's clit. A little circle motion was part of the new technique that Goku used, but it looked vaguely familiar to Cauliflower. Slowly but surely, the small circle of ki started to wiggle and a long stick of flesh that looked exactly like Goku's dick came out of Cauliflower's body. Whoa! What is this? You did this before to yourself but you never told us you can do it to us. Here, now wave that thing in front of Kale. Kale was confused about the cryptic conversation because Cauliflower's big butt was blocking her view, not that she minded. Cauliflower whipped around and the meat almost smacked her in the face. Kale looked at the new object with awe as it was attached to Cauliflower. Her whole stigma of dicks thrown straight out of the window as she gobbled up her prize. T this is pretty hot, you lucky bastard seeing such a great sight every day. Just the perspective of looking down as a girl goes up and down your cock is a sight to behold. Kale was going to town taking most of the dick down her throat. Oh man, this feels so much better. All the pleasure was being transmitted to Goku and he was always open to a new mouth on the scene. Looks like it would feel good, why can't I feel anything? You need to learn spirit control and you will be able to. Quite easy, I can teach you for next time. You hear that Kale? Next time we do this, I will be able to feel everything. Kale just kept sucking like there was no one else in the world besides her and Cauliflower's stick. Of course, it wasn't Cauliflower's but that is what Kale Brain told her. This is hot but it's kinda dull when I can't feel. Goku's dick rammed inside of Cauliflower's pussy giving her voice a different octave. Much better. Two different simulations hit Goku at once. Hot pussy and was gripping every part of his dick asking for a release and a hungry mouth that was waiting to be fed. He was already close due to Kale's mouth so he didn't last too much longer inside Cauliflower's wet cave. Cauliflower speed her up. I am almost there. Kale's head started moving faster as did Goku's hip while ramming Cauliflower. Cauliflower was the first to climax on Goku's rod and because of it, pushed Kale in as deep as she can go. Kale was next and she wet the bed with her juices as it sprayed everywhere. Goku finally released his load pushing Cauliflower face down, laying on the bed. Kale was pinned in Cauliflower's SS nether regions and the bed but that didn't stop Goku from releasing his load straight into Cauliflower's womb and Kale's stomach at the same time. Both mouths welcomed the seed and gulped it down in no time. Goku got up from Cauliflower allowing her to get up and free Kale. Goku wasn't done however and Kale was going to learn that the hard way. He put Kale on top of Cauliflower with Goku's dick still attached. Cauliflower got the message and inserted the dick inside Kale's awaiting pussy. Kale didn't have time to drink that seed that had her cheeks puffed up before the dick entered her vagina. Oh, you look so cute Kale struggling to drink his seed. Oh right, you are a virgin, oops. Probably should have been gentler. Cauliflower started to move her hips giving Kale a harder time to concentrate on the stuff inside her mouth. Goku on the other hand was liking the fresh meat that his dick was receiving but if you can have more, why not take more? Goku came up behind them and lined up his dick to another hole. One above the norm that was winking at Goku. He accepted the invitation, made sure everything was lubed up and slid on in. 
With the sudden invasion into her ass, Kale couldn't take it anymore and was about to let the precious drink in her mouth go. Cauliflower saw this and decided to help. She kissed Kale and played around her tongue inside her mouth and drank the excess sperm. Even with it all gone, she kept on kissing to help the poor girl in her first session of sex. It looked a little lonely for Cauliflower so Goku created another one of his long trains right below his previous one. Such a sophisticated technique had no problems with the structure of the human body. He inserted that one in Coilfla's already leaking pussy giving her a squeal of pleasure. The rhythmic motions and the feeling of being stuffed and kissed by Coilfla made Kale come again, and again, and again. By the time Goku was feeling the pressure build for him to be done, Kale was already a wreck on the bed. Goku released his load once again in all three holes making Kale feel like a turkey in Thanksgiving. Wow. That was something. I never used three before. Yeah let's keep going. Kale's face of exhaustion became one of regret as she kept on eating Coilfla's juices mixed in with Goku's. This may be a dream but she felt like she was going to die as she enjoyed it. Hey you two, hope you didn't start without us. Bursting into the room. Shishi and Bulma had very little clothing ready to have their nightly session. They were surprised to see a new member, but at the same time, wasn't surprised and went with it. More fun for everyone. Now these two girls mastered their spirit control. Are you two ready for some fun? Everyone smiled at the same time creeping Kale out a little. Coilfla looked down to where Kale was eating her out. We are going to be in for good time. Kale woke up with sweat dripping down her forehead. Last night was so crazy that she was wondering if it was all a dream. From what she could remember, she woke up in the middle of the night feeling quite sore and after getting up to get water, she was whisked by Cauliflower into bed with her and Goku. Her head hurt and she got out of bed earlier than the rest. She went out to the backyard to really think about what happened and what was the next move. I didn't help that she didn't remember anything before that got her into that mess. However, she didn't sneak quietly enough and someone overheard her walking away. Joining her in the backyard, he leaned against the wall of the compound until she spoke. What happened yesterday? I'm so confused. Yesterday as in last night or during the day. Because if you want I can go into detail about last night. No. I meant during the day. My memory is so foggy. Well, from what I heard, you kinda went berserk when you saw Coilfla and Vegeta fall. Not only did you push Cell and 21 back, but you also had them running for their lives. You even attacked some of the others during it as well, including me. Oh, sorry. Goku wanted to tease her more, but he could tell she is really distressed and confused. Don't worry about it, if you really want to apologize to someone, buy 18 some new clothes or something. If, you don't in a couple of hours don't blame me if some of your stuff goes missing. Heh. There was a comfortable silence after that. The most comfortable that the two ever had. They never really talked together by themselves, usually one of the girls or kids was also in the room with them making it less awkward. While they bonded with everyone else in the house, they themselves never really bonded until last night that is. After a while, Goku broke the silence and started talking about random stuff. It went from small talk to talking about one thing that they had in common. You knew I had a crush on Cauliflower. And you basically told everyone when you told Cauliflower to say that. Oh please, everyone knew you had a crush on her. You weren't really hiding it well. Cauliflower was a nice topic to dangle on until they circled back to her enraged rampage. What do you think this is? I, I don't feel normal. 
I'm pretty sure I know what you are going through, ah, uh, just a hunch. Don't scream when you find out okay. Such a nice talk came to an end when Goku brought out the thick Saiyan book. It was a great tool for literally the entire Saiyan population besides himself. The Saiyan book. What about it? I already read the important bits. You read the bits that you thought were important. Look over here, on the last chapter. Kale leaned in where it was talking about other transformations. Goku delved deeper into the chapter and pointed at the particular special case that he was looking for. Legendary Super Saiyan. Read that. She had an extreme foreboding sensation swell up inside her chest. Gulping down a swab of saliva, she read in the depth all that the Dragon Shinron knew about the legendary Super Saiyan. Much is unknown about the legendary Super Saiyan, but one noticeable thing about this Saiyan is its uncontrollable rage and legendary potential. Just the introduction got her hooked. The more she read the more she understood of herself, and what she was going to become. Ah, uh, are you saying that I am a legendary Super Saiyan? But that would mean, no I I can't be. Kale started to hyperventilate. Goku patted her back and told her to calm down. Hey Dingus, I told you not you freak out. Calm down, and let me tell you how you can overcome your own genes. It took a while indeed, but she eventually calmed down and turned quiet. Goku, the most capable person she has ever met, even more than Cauliflower, told her that there is a way. She had to listen. Well. The information in the book is murky at best, only bits and pieces from thousands of years ago. It is stating what is known and even that may not be true. The first way and guaranteed way to fix your special body is to wish for something from Shinron. From what I heard, Dendi and Kami upgraded him so it should work. The other way is to walk the path not trekked and be the first to control it. The book says uncontrollable. Just because no one has controlled it before doesn't mean it is uncontrollable. You will eventually implode with endless power and die. Maybe those before you just didn't have a strong enough body. Either way, it is your choice. My choice. It's a choice of life or struggling to survive. What would Cauliflower say to do? Kale whispered to herself while thinking about it. Probably something like train. Don't be a coward. You can overcome it Kale, I believe in you. HMPH, I can't rise to an expectation like that. Goku chuckled a bit at Kale, even with a life or death choice before her, still thinks about Cauliflower. Maybe you don't know Cauliflower after all. What? Or maybe you don't understand how important you are to her. Do you really think she will throw Cyan Pride Bull Shasterisk tea at you like Vegeta? She cares a lot about you. She would probably tell you to do it at first, but if it doesn't work out, she might even do the wish for you. This got Kale thinking, does Cauliflower care that much about me? Don't think about Cauliflower for one second, what do you want to do? Well. Goku smiled. She was actually considering her choices more in depth. He could tell that Cauliflower wasn't as big of a factor in her decision just from the constant mumbling. You, you didn't have a clear path ahead of you did you? You might have had the book, but that was like a saying there is a heaven, not how to get there. You basically achieved Super Saiyan by yourself and now are teaching us. I, I. She's gone quiet once again. Walking down the path blind while leaving torches behind for everyone else. Truly, if he didn't know anything about DBZ, he would be fumbling about just how to survive being a monkey boy. Well, she will believe what she wants to. What she doesn't know about won't harm her. I will. I will do this myself.
I won't cower and control my rage. And I will be the first and help the people after learn to. Yes. The look of determination on her face was classified as cute and fierce. Maybe it will. Just maybe. All right, I think first you need to learn to control your ape form. That is a step in the right direction. You know Goku, you are a lot better and cooler than I thought. Ah, uh, thanks. Goku. Their special moment got interrupted by Bulma's voice coming down from the lab. In it had a mix of excitement that was signature whenever something tech happened. 16s programming is done. I can wake him up now if you want. Bulma told Goku and Kale as they entered the lab. Bulma woke up just to come straight down here and see how that decoding was coming along. It actually went smoother than she thought and she was able to revert 16 back to how he was before. Excluding the initiative to kill Goku of course. Yeah, let's boot him up and maybe we can get some information on Cell and 21. Sure. Wake him up without my permission and without 18 being here. The sarcastic voice in the corner reminded him that 17 was here all night. Such an overprotective dad. Kale, can you get 18 over here? She should be in one of the spare rooms, sleeping in a bed like a normal person. Did I just hear you correctly? 17 looked at Goku with dead eyes as usual while Goku didn't even turn in his direction. Tell her we are about to turn on 16. Are you all ready? The lab was fairly spacious with 17, 18, Goku, and Bulma surrounding 16. Kale, after sending 18 downstairs, went to talk to Cauliflower about her future after finding out she woke up. This better be good to warrant 16's reprogramming. Oh shut your complaining 17. Bulma said that 21 did something to her, I trust her. You are getting too comfortable with the people here 18, it's concerning. You are just jealous that I've made new friends while all you have done is been sleeping in the basement. TSK, let's get this over with. All right. Let's do this. Bulma was more than ready to see the product of her own work. After pressing the button that initiates the program, she stepped back to give 16 some room. After a few moments, 16 eyes opened violently. Streams of data were scrolling through his eyes as if they were one of the few monitors in the lab. An extended amount of text went by before it came to a stop and Android 16 was fully rebooted. Awake with a new brain in the metaphorical sense, he sat up and looked around. Computing, accessing memory, establishing initiative. Hello, Goku, Bulma, Android 17, Android 18. It seems as if you, reprogrammed me. I do not hear 21's presence inside my head anymore. Correct Amundu. Goku was hoping that after restoring you to your previous version, that you wouldn't be so hostile to us and maybe even help us stop 21. Android 16 smiled, it was as if Goku knew how he was before. Indeed. Android 21 added extra code that made me obedient to her. It was unpleasant but she didn't change me massively. Android 16, we need to find and stop 21 before she does any more harm. You were with her even before she activated 17 and 18, what can you tell us about her? 16 looked at Goku's eyes for a second. Searching. Searching for something within them. No horrible man would be loved by so many. Before I give you the information, I need you to promise something Son Goku. Help me save her. Help you how? I don't know. Dash. Ah. This is wonderful. Android 21 was sitting next to another version of the key container that Goku sieged in the previous lab. 
her tail was in one of the holes that connected to the yellow substance that was key. Her power was increasing steadily, her base limit higher than ever before. That was enough for now. If I take too much food, the batteries will die before they can recharge. Such cruelty to those poor humans. Using them just for power, you are the same as you were back then. Shut up your thoughts are inconsequential, you should just disappear for good and get out of my head. I will never leave. Although you have all the power right now, I will find a way out, eventually. You will never escape the insides of my mind. That is where you will live forever, and it is your fault for being too weak. On the outside, it just looked like Android 21 was closing her eyes thinking in her head. But unveiling the curtains to look inside, we see two 21s looking at each other conversing. One with red pupils and black eyes, similar to the one who sees the rays of the sun. And another, with white eyes and blue pupils, one that lives in the shadows. Two sides of her mind, split long ago, one good and one evil. Yet although they are both her, one holds all the power. The good 21 didn't speak anymore, she had nothing more to say. Of course, she wouldn't seek power at the expenditure of other living beings. She wasn't a monster. But because of it, she released a monster to harm everyone anyway. 21's eyes opened because of a sound from the room over. The big clank could wake up anyone within a mile radius. Luckily, no one was nearby. Looking over, Cell was messing with a strange device. Standing on five legs, it looked like a virus with how it was shaped. Clear glass on top with a seat inside, the machine was finished off with multiple rockets on the sides of it. What are you doing? Don't touch that. What? You seem awfully protective and emphasize its importance yet we don't use it. What is it? Cell was getting bored and quite irritated. Hold up inside of this godforsaken base wasn't fit for such a superior being such as himself. 21's eyes glowed with anger at the sight of Cell touching that machine. It's the source of all my information, how I got here, and if I need to leave. Dash. You are saying Android 21 is from the future. Everyone was shocked by what they were hearing. Even Goku. B but how is that possible? Time travel should theoretically be impossible. Bulma maddened with the idea of such lucrative technology denied all claims. I am model after her son, so she did not hold back in letting loose her feelings and venting her frustrations. She said it didn't matter anyway because... By the time anyone figured out, it wouldn't be of use. Tell us more. Anything useful she let out to you. She said she has another side to her. A weaker side that is on the verge of breaking out. Especially after what she experiences in the future. She retold the story of how they had everyone beat her, even her other self sided with the opposition. However, before they can finish it, she completed her side project after stealing Bulma's notes and escaped with a time machine that she capsuled. Strangely enough, forces of the world recombined the 221s before the departure trapping the other 21 inside the current one. So you are saying that there are 221s and you want us to free the good one? Yes. That's right you buy asterisk ch. You ain't smarter than me. You stole my notes. I was the one who had the blueprints for a time machine. But you don't know how to do it. Yes. Interesting. My biggest question was, why didn't the future us send reinforcements? They as per usual ignored Bulma and her happiness. Asking to separate the 21s is a huge task. Even if Goku learned the Force Spirit Fission from Yardrat, that was to separate two beings. 
he didn't know how it would work with two entities that were originally one and the same. Anyways the crux of the matter is the longer we wait, the stronger they get. I have a plan and the power to defeat them but I don't know how long that will last with their current increase in power. 16. Do you know where they are? Affirmative, they are in the northern plains at an abandoned our army lab. Even if they assume the worst and know that I turned on them, they would still need a large amount of time to remove and transport the energy extractor that they use on the humans. We should go now to intercept them. Goku nodded, he put on some fighting gear in a second and was ready to head out. We are coming too. We are. Of course we are. You wouldn't want to miss out on the fun would you? It was decided by Seventeen that they wouldn't want to miss out on the android family reunion. Good thing there were only five, any more would be redundant. Alright, let's go. Sixteen, you are coming too. Wait are you going to take Cauliflower as well? I'm sure she would ready and pumped to use her new power. Or even the kids. Bulma had to intervene at the last second. I would hate to say it, but Cauliflower and the kids aren't powerful enough. The only reason why I don't mind the androids coming is that they would come even if I told them not to. Besides, Kale needs Cauliflower's support right now and we shouldn't ruin it. Fine, she won't be too happy when you tell her your exact words. She would understand and only want to get stronger. With that, the four figures took off to the sky towards the base that Sixteen indicated. Dash. This can't happen like last time. I'll just play it slow and keep gaining power. Cell has been increasingly annoying, maybe I should get rid of him earlier than planned. Ah. It wasn't a sound of pleasure like it was last time, this time, her brain was receiving massive waves of pain originating from an unknown spot. What is happening? Intense ringing, like a bell, echoed throughout her mind. She couldn't think and be forced to kneel down in agony. Cell ran into the room and watched by the doorway alerted by the sound. This is the sound of my freedom. I have been working on tearing a spot on your wall ever since you came here years ago and I have finally broken through. You can't contain me anymore. The voice inside her head made her feel crazier than she actually was. Her body was phasing in and out, it was like she was trying to create after images in place. Until eventually, two after-images materialized into physical constructs, and with a boom in the center, launched each other in different directions embedding their respective walls. Evil 21 was laughing out loud after she inspected her inner body. Virtually no power loss. Even with the power loss, it wasn't dangerous to her and she would be able to easily get it back after sucking her good counterpart dry. She started talking contemptuously to herself across the aisle as she tried to get out. You've doomed yourself. I couldn't get rid of you when you were in my mind but now I can eliminate you forever. Such idiocy won't go unpunished. How certain are you that they are in this base? 99.9% .9 certain. Almost at the fabled base of 21 and Cell. They were truly out of nowhere, a deserted desert if you will. We are here. Here. There is no one here. Just more sand that seems to stretch out for an eternity. Are we sure Bulma didn't knock any screws in your head 16? There is nothing here, unless it's another underground base. I have only seen this reveal itself once before, but I have the method of activation stored in my memory. Android 16 moved to a certain cactus, one out of many scattered around, while the rest of the team promptly stepped back when he beckoned to. Pushing two of its spines with his fingers at the same time, then a third with his foot. A few seconds passed until a clicking sound could be heard. Normally, 
someone without the correct pressure would have the spine pierced through, or the spine would break from the pressure. The cactus hissed and the back part of it opened up and shot a light screen as if it was a projector. This light scanned the area in front of it a few times before it shot its light slowly revealing a medium-sized structure from its invisibility. The building had a force field-like structure surrounding it shedding its cyan light dimly on the surroundings. What? Didn't we come from that way? How did we not run into the building? What 18 said was what was on the other two guys' minds as well. From what I know, this force field is the cause of such a phenomenon. It covertly distorts your perception forcing you to go around the building without you noticing. Looks like it even worked on you Goku, technology from the future is unpredictable. Yeah, that is, kinda scary. Whatever, can you disable it? Of course. Next to the projector lens, was a small button which 16 pressed. The building was scanned once again, but this time, the force field disappeared from the top to bottom. Hey. Great, what are you two doing here? Dad, did you really think you could have fun without us? What a big meanie. Goku rolled his eyes as Bulla and Gohan landed next to him. Truly, he instilled the Goku mindset onto the next generation. Just as they were flying above the building, however, the glass on the top broke and a figure launched towards two flying Saiyans. They all crashed into each other, but since the lone's figure speed was much higher, they went in that direction and landed on a bunch of cactus. You would think this would hurt more but we are Saiyans. From inside the building, you can hear maniacal laughter. Weak. I expected nothing less. Hum. Wait. Wait what? Rising from inside the lab, a pink figure with white hair levitated above it shocked at her surroundings. What happened to the force field? How are you outside? W what? She didn't really think that throwing her counterpart outside would do anything. At worst, she would slam into the force field leaving the outside world oblivious to the beating. That is when she saw Goku and the androids and her top blew off. You traitors. I no wonder. This time I will personally tear you all apart and rebuild you to my own image. I won't let that happen. Rising from the dust of where she was launched from the lab, Good 21 stood up. We were badly beaten up in no condition to fight, but the determination and will to fight never left her eyes. The good version of 21. Well, that was easy. Don't worry, ah, uh, 21, I will take care of her. Normal Super Saiyan wasn't enough. That much was evident from when Evil 21 fought Kale. He needed one step further. Luckily, he was one step further. Ah. Powering up his Super Saiyan transformation to the max, his hair started to stand on end as if it were shocked from the inside out. If you took into account the lighting surrounding him, you can say he ascended into a true Super Saiyan. 100 times stronger than his base form, he launched towards 21 in the air. You think that I don't have anything more? Rolling her sleeve in the literal sense, there was a little control panel there. Pressing a few buttons, a signal was transferred invisibly. Android 17 and 18 SIs light up red without their doing and their bodies launched up to meet Goku. At the combo attack of the two androids, he had to back off unsure how to proceed. He didn't want to damage them until he figured out what was going on. After landing, the two androids flew up beside 21. HMPH, it seems you removed my programming inside 16, or I would have overwritten him as well. No matter, Cell should be powerful enough. Cell. As if waiting for his signal. 
Cell burst through the front door at top speed surprising 16 who was in his path. Goku who saw Cell and was able to react in time was stopped in his tracks to helping 16 when a pair of kicks was about to smash into his face. He didn't have time to appreciate the shoes and had to narrowly dodge them and the other set that was behind him that he sensed. 17, 18, snap out of it. I thought you hated her. This is quite interesting, my mind thinks freely but only my body is controlled. Yeah, such a surreal experience. And it's not like we hate her, we only choose the side who is going to win. It seems like you aren't in a favorable position. How can you know my position if you don't know all my cards yet? The two androids kept their coordinated assault even when talking to Goku. I, I have to help Ark. The good 21 tried to stand up, but her injuries were too great and she fell back down on one knee. Now where did we leave off? Goku looked over to the side helplessly. He had to power through the androids and potentially do serious damage in hopes that they would get repaired by Bulma. What Goku knew however was that when unable to control their body and controlled by another person, they might keep fighting until they are dead. I can't wait to break you. 21 have me the go ahead but honestly, even if she didn't, I would have anyway. I never liked you and your robotic nature. I wonder, even still, do you scream for mercy? I have diagnosed you as a psychopath, however, you probably already knew that. Meanwhile, 16 and Cell were having an interesting conversation. Wait the kids. Weren't they with 21? They could try what I taught them but I don't know if they are going to be able to do it. Wait where are they? Goku looked over to where all three of them crashed he didn't see a sight of his kids in the carnage. A little too late, the ground underneath where the androids and Goku were fighting shook. The ground broke underneath them and coming out of it like moles were his two kids. Their fist was in the air for an uppercut. Just when he thought they were good for something, it was actually his face that got punched. What was that for? You idiot. That was dad. Oh, oops, he he. Dad, it was a mistake, please don't ground me. The two children uppercut the two males while 18 just retreated back to stay with 17. They dug all the way there concealing their key for the perfect not so perfect surprise attack. Dad, we will stall 17 and 18. We will show them we are the better tag team. Besides we have been practicing the technique you taught us. We got this. Goku nodded his head, a little proud at those two little brats. Although, the uppercut still stung a bit. Flying over, he launched another fist at the flying 21. She was annoying, about to decimate her other self was interrupted again. Can't she have some fun and just kill herself or did people had to stop her? You are from the future correct? You may think you know all my tricks but I assure you that you will still be surprised. What from your ape form? That form is useless, inferior to even the first Super Saiyan transformation. Just turn into my snack already and let me walk over the corpses of the people on this planet. You already know my answer. Less talk, more of my fist in your face. Android 16 told us something a little special, not only did you time travel from the future, but you got your asterisk s beaten by future me as well. What do you think would be different this time? I got the most powerful armor on my side. No matter what I do, as if it is fate. You always seem to have some sort of way of foiling my plans. I don't know what past I ventured into, but you will not stop me, I can't be stopped. Not again. Lighting crackled around Goku and his blonde hair as he strapped on in. Super Saiyan 2, 
or as this universe would call it, true super scion. During his time in the hyperbolic time chamber, he achieved his transformation with ease. Time to put it to the test. Goku put his hands on the ground mysteriously as the first move. Android 21 rushed in not wanting Goku to finish off whatever he started. Did he think he could bend the ground or something? Her answer came to her when blots of ki started erupting out of the ground like a volcano spewing lava. Some flew into her path and it was getting harder and harder to dodge since there was barely any reaction time from when she saw it to it blasting in her face. Finally one hit her, but it wasn't enough to bring her down, only to stop her. When she opened her eyes, it was met with key balls all around her person as if waiting to jump scare her. Peekaboo. Endless amounts of key balls gravitated towards her with no escape route in sight. She tried her best to bat them away while going forwards, it was her only option. Unfortunately for her, she batted one into another and it set off a chain reaction combining into one huge explosion. Just the first interaction and there has yet to be any actual fighting. It was looking rather one-sided on every battleground so far but not the side that the Earth wants. Dash. You're trash 16, you always have been. Did you really think you could beat me? 16 was trying his best, but he was easily overpowered by the green monster that ate power. When it comes to my power, 1 plus 1 doesn't always equal 2, the power I absorb is much more than that. It is true quite an easy task for the genetic scientist that was Android 21 with her future knowledge. Of course, that was the same for her as well. Both of 16's hands launched out of his arms aiming towards Cell. Dodge left, dodge bellow, such as predictable patterns. But since Cell was in the spotlight fighting all the time, it gave 16 enough data to fight him. The remaining part of his arm glowed in light at the end. A blast of highly pressured key lurched out and created an explosion on Cell's face. He didn't have the firepower to defeat Cell but he can surely stall. Cell's entire head was deleted from existence with burnt residue on his neck. You can already see his cells regenerating as if recovering from a minor cut. Sixteen didn't let up and ran up to him with his arm outstretched. Performing a lariat, Cell fell back into the ground open for more attacks. His two hands flew back towards them, but instead of going back to their owner, they went straight to the downed Cell with rocket boosters accelerating them. Puncturing a hole as large as the fist were, they opened their hands while inside Cell and unleashed Hell. Cell's body lit up like a firework from the key and exploded from the overextension. Of course, this wasn't the end as his body started to work fast regenerating from just one lone cell in the air. Dash. Gohan and Bulla, proud of their coordination and teamwork clearly have never met Android 16 and 17. They were basically the grown-up versions of themselves but stronger and unlimited energy to unleash. What's wrong? I thought you Super Saiyan brats were going to put up more of a fight. As the android taunted them more with their monotone voices, it really got into the children's heads. 17 and 18 separated the two and it was 17 vs Gohan and 18 vs Bulla. If they weren't winning together, they had less of a chance separate. Gohan took a serious punch in the gut letting 17 lift his small body up while Bulla's back cracked from the pressure of 18's kick. Picking them both up, they threw them into each other. Gohan could see 18 coming in with another heavy hitter while Bulla could see the same with 17. Gohan reacted fast and pushed Bulla up with his hands while boosting him up in the process. The androids' fist crashed into each other where the children's heads were previously. Not missing this chance, Gohan and Bulla fired Ki Wave from top and bottom. 
a key battle against androids. That was a battle they could never win. With perfect accuracy, they shot down each and every one with minimal effort watching each other's back in the process. What? I call bogus, they have to be using a name but or something. Well, they are androids. Let's do the new move. Yeah. Was this the new technique they were discussing earlier? Gohan encased himself inside a dense key sphere with multiple layers like a hamster in a ball. Two one-way turrets jutted out from the front and Gohan put his hands in them. Bulla did the same as him, but before she was fully encased, she shot out a string of buoyant key connecting the two acting as a rope. What the? Creativity, that was something the kids had on them utterly stumping them on their plans. Bulla started to run, and her ball started to rotate. Building so much speed like a race car brushing up dirt until finally, she allowed the key ball to launch forward. Although it was extremely fast, 18 still was able to dodge it from such a long start-up time. As she watched Bulla keep on going on her path, she notices the rope stretching as if it were about to tear. Wait. Her head jerked back to where Gohan was but all she got was a bright ball of ki rushing at her. Smacked in the face, she fell to the ground from the hard impact. They were far from done. Anchoring herself so she wouldn't get pulled from Gohan's momentum when he landed, she started to circle the two androids. Feeding off of one another's speed and momentum, eventually, their encirclement got insanely fast brewing up the dirt underneath them like a hurricane. Such long practice, they were able to move perfectly in sync with one another. Finally using the turrets that were thought to be a decoration at that point. Gushes of key came out hitting the androids on all sides. Even though each blast didn't hurt them that much, there was too many key blasts in this key storm attack accumulating their damage. They tired constantly to fly out, but the key blast was extremely concentrated on the top combined with the dirt everywhere, forced them to go down. Seems we got a problem. Dash. Back over at the main fight, it wasn't a fight of cat and mouse. Goku, although slightly weaker while in this form, made up for it from his superior key tactics and strategies to always keep 21 in a disadvantage. He had just thrown three destructo discs slicing both of her arms and her legs from her torso. He wanted to approach and finish her but didn't throw caution to the wind. Bombarding her with key blasts while he ran up, her body was compiled in a shroud of smoke. Mere inches away from the smoke, this danger sense was going off the charts. Leave. Goku jumped away, but it didn't even matter. A purple hand stretched like there was no tomorrow and found Goku's neck to hold. The smoke dissipated and revealed a mangled body of 21. Only her hand which was quickly regenerated if the two other hands on the floor weren't any indication, was purple with strange black triangles on it. Slowly, the purple started to corrupt her pink side shading her in a more evil look. It was having an effect on her sanity, as she looked more crazed than ever. Eventually, her entire body, from head to toe, was replaced from the previous pink to a purple accelerating her power to new heights. Pulling him closer, she licked her lips as if she found juicy prey in front of her in the form of Goku and pointed her finger from her other hand that regenerated. The separated body parts earlier seemed like it gained sentience of itself and remerged with her already. Firing a candy beam, Goku kicked her in the shin resulting in her misfiring her beam into the sky above. Coating his hand in key to form a blade. He sliced the hand strangling him, and retreated back while 21 winced in pain. He threw the arm that was still clenched on the ground next to him. Finally, this form came out, something worth testing it out on. True heart of a scion. Gotta say, I liked you better when you were pink. 
Hot pink was kinda in the name for a reason. Shut up, shut up, shut up. I am tired of listening to you talk. Ah. Uh. Her power was out of control and you could tell that her sanity was going to leave her the longer she was in this form. Key blasts were decorating their battlefield like it was raining fire. The fight from over there was affecting the battle more than Goku liked. Fine, fine, I won't let you hear my beautiful voice. But if you are transforming, it would only be fair if I did as well right. Reverting back into his base form he was about to break history once again. What's new? Tensing his muscles, his veins all over his body strained to its limits to keep up with the power that was currently being forced out from within. Despite him being in his base form, the aura around glowed a light yellow as he started this transformation. The air around him started to swirl into a dense smoke masking parts of his body as if they were called to. Releasing a muffled yell into the sky with the sound of a distorted ape. What? It felt good. This transformation was similar to his ape form, hair growing all across his body similar to his tail. Except for this time. The golden aura seeped inside every hair that grew to turn it into deep scarlet color. Each and every one eluded phenomenal power. Lastly, his hair turned into a comfortable mane while his eyes turned yellow. Completing the transformation, a phantom of an enraged ape with golden hair protruded out of him affecting everyone around him. 21, hit with it at point blank had the golden ape encompass her brain. It rampaged around her mind not helping with her sanity one bit. I didn't want to use this transformation but such a strong opponent to test my limits. I can already tell I am many times stronger than her, but the transformation will only last 10 minutes tops. That is the penalty of reaching this checkpoint without my body being ready for it. Because of his wish previously allowing him easier control of transformations, he was able to get this transformation even before Super Saiyan 2. However, with his weak body and weak key reserves, he could not sustain it for long. The only solution was to get stronger in his base form to truly capitalize the power in this transformation and last substantially longer. Android 21 was still holding her head from the passive mental attack that he unleashed with just transforming into the state. Luckily, his allies were outside the range unaffecting them. Although they were holding their own, 16 stalling cell with his unlimited energy and massive firepower, and Gohan and Bulla bombarding 18 and 17 in their airtight creativity and teamwork. He knew he needed to finish 21 before taking care of their opponents. The good 21 watched from a safe distance, her heart was in a state of turmoil. All of this doom and destruction was all because of her. At least that was what she thought. If only I was stronger, I could have destroyed her before she got out of control. But I failed, twice. She turned to look at Goku who was standing tall with his back facing her. The sun shone perfectly to make him out to be heaven sent, glistening upon his red fur. What is this timeline? Based on my research, of course, there should be branching timelines but this is to the extreme. This Goku already is reaching the scope of the Goku I met before and he is many times younger. What could possibly happen to change this one so much from the one I was just in? Having a time limit on this transformation, Goku vanished into action. He didn't wait for 21 to recover and appeared before her in an extremely calm manner. Similar to the ape form, this super ape form suppressed his mind to be calm and steady. Unless prompted, that high ceiling won't be broken anytime soon. Grabbing each hand by the wrist, he snapped both of her arms to an irregular position. The snap sounds of bones and intense pain broke the mental lock that she was in and she found herself back into a position of inferiority. Ah! 
Even after transforming to my ultimate form, I am still weaker. Still weak at every turn and corner. She looked at Goku with her red eyes in silence. She couldn't move her arms as he was holding on to it and even with her regeneration factor, it couldn't be put to use if he held it in that position forever. Soon she would find out that it will be a long time until she can look at his eyes directly again. Trapping her hands next to her and he put her in a hold. Hugging the life out of her, her back muscles started to crumble down as her skin got closer and closer to his. If she didn't stop this, her eyes would eventually pop out, so she sent her other appendage that can attack at the moment and that was her tail. It wasn't one where it could suck the life force of the opposition, but its sharp end could do some serious damage to an unsuspecting victim. Just as it was going to pierce his skin, she felt something soft but strong hold onto her tail. Looking down with great effort, she saw his red tail that intervened. His red tail wrapped around hers and constrained it as well. She felt as if she was being wrung out by a constrictor snake. Dash. This is getting old, let's get of here 18. Yeah, these kids put up quite the fight. Being the machines that they were, they were able to calculate the best escape route even when bombarded with key techniques. Their brains worked similarly to each other so they were in sync. Although it was a good and creative technique, with weak firepower, they were never going to win. Go 18. Don't tell me what to do. Even though she said that she still went to start their plan. Their technique resembled a bowler's, a throwing weapon with two balls at the end with a rope connecting them, usually entrapping others by their legs. Whenever they tried to sever that rope, which was a weak but buoyant string of key, they would get bombarded to no end similar to the situation when they would try to go up. This technique was meant for one person, otherwise, how could they prevent them from escaping and protect their cord? 18 dashed up to try her best to get out of the encirclement, and naturally, the two kids both focused their shots upward to stop her. 17 saw the opening and dashed down towards their rope to cut it down. They noticed what they were trying to do and Gohan switched his firing to 17 alleviating pressure from 18. This, however, didn't alert the two kids but actually made them smile. With each android only dealing with half of the firepower, they were able to use brute strength to get out. Seventeen was able to barely sever the line when Buller opted to aim at him to ignoring Eighteen. But she was too late. With their line severed the two balls and their momentum started to go in the direction that they were facing when they were cut at momentous speed. Heh, kids thought they got us. The two went in completely opposite directions and didn't stop any time soon. Both of the kids still had their hands in the turrets and both of them shot at Seventeen who was still in the middle. He smirked and floated up a little leveling with Eighteen letting the two key blast clash with each other midair. You thought that would get me? No. They both said the line at the same time making Seventeen confused. If that blast wasn't met for him, then what was it used for? The two key blast that connected with each other and stayed with each other where they met as they also went back to the spheres at light speed. The two keys made another rope. It didn't even take a millisecond for this rope to be stretched to its limits rocketing both spheres towards the center. It didn't end there, the two kids even use a came hame ha wave to propel them faster. Unable to react to the massive speed both androids got crushed with their backs against each other. Such a huge impact and acceleration. It did incredible damage to the interior and exterior of the androids. Even the kids' multilayered Densky spheres started to crack like an egg until finally breaking allow all participants to free fall to the ground. Landing on the ground on their two feet the androids crashed just a few feet away from them. Nice. Hopefully, 
we didn't break them. Giving each other a high five, they were given explicit orders not to do too much damage since they were fighting against their will. It seems they did the right amount to knock them out but not irreparable injuries. Break them. Think about our situation. We broke our balls. Dash. Merely 30 seconds have passed since he transformed and 21 already felt like she was going to die. Now Goku could keep squishing her butt with the genes of Majin Buu of the future, she would not die anytime soon. Throwing her in the air he prepared a Kamehameha of epic proportions. 10x its usual power if you will. After being constrained for so long, 21 felt paralyzed still unable to move her arms or circulate her ki. Came Haim Ha. A blast of ki, red in color, came barreling towards here. The sheer power of it indicated that it would incinerate her on the spot leaving no room to revive. As she saw her life flash before her eyes. She was only a teenager for goodness sake. She was too young to die. Her whole body felt like it wasn't hers to control and she felt the breeze of the air. Abruptly, that breeze got stronger and turned to wind pelting her face. Opening her eyes, she saw that she was actually flying towards Cell who had his hand in the air covered in a slight red glow. Telekinesis. Arriving before Cell, she was gently placed down next to him. She could barely speak. T thank you, Cell Herc. She couldn't even speak a single sentence before Cell's tail pierced her stomach. I've never seen this form before. Ha ha. I can feel so much power. His tail gobbled up giant chunks of her key and nearly finished her key reserves in a second. Ha ha ha. His power and aura skiro kitted deepening its shade to a dark purple. His overall tone became darker and his eyes that were already wild transformed black with the same yellow pupils. As said before, the energy he absorbed multiplied within itself leaving the combined key reserves bigger than both of them had previously. For the reason why they didn't do this earlier, this is the reason. You are useless to me now, I thank you for your service, however. Without you. I would have never been able to reach this level of power. Now be a good animal and keep producing key for me to absorb. Cell threw 21 through the hole that was busted by 21 herself into the lab and into the energy containment that housed the other entities that had their power sucked. Goku looked over in the direction of the other battles. The kids were finished with their battle but looking past them. He saw 16 on the ground roughed up with smoke coming out of somewhere. Kids, take the androids to Bulma, I will finish here. Ah uh, okay. The battlefield was empty now, ready for Goku to unleash his full strength. Son Goku I will take my revenge now. After all that humiliation that I was forced to take. I finally have more power than you. Truly. This was inevitable. We know, you are a typical supervillain. You don't have to steal literally everything from them from the monologues to the plot. Let's just get this over with. Both of them ran towards each other, the earth shaking from every one of their steps. Goku had a smile on his face, as he won the first exchange with a fist cracking Cell's cheek. Now this is the life. Cell he lashed out in retaliation, with a quick swipe. Goku grabbed his arm as it passed by and was ready to use it as leverage. He has seen enough of Goku's holds and decided to blast off his arm before he could go any further. Surprised at the quick decision, Cell kicked him in the stomach before he could react. He skids back a little, but he was stopped much to his confusion. He was pushed towards Cell who was ready with a supercharged punch. With a very delicate touch and speed, he pushed Cell's arm to the side. Even though he successfully diverted the punch, the momentum still made him fall to the ground. Rolling on the ground on purpose, 
he jumped up smoothly making sure not to leave any openings. He looked at who had pushed him and he saw a small little blue gremlin looking awfully similar to Cell. He even had the dark and evil effect Cell had after absorbing Evil 21. It didn't take long for him to multiply surrounding Goku on all sides. Just one Cell neared his Cell, he needed to really focus to take these ones out. The first one jumped and the rest followed. The main one stayed back watching but ready to pounce whenever. As the Cell Junior got into range, Goku launched a sweeping high kick to meet him in the middle. Goku's foot exploded the little guy midair and his foot didn't stop in momentum at all. Attacked on all sides, he had no time to rest and meticulously destroyed them one by one. When two got their heads crushed by Goku's large hands, three replaced them. They kept coming, like little blue germs, persistent and unwavering by death. Each Cell Junior was killed a different way, a back fist was Goku's personal favorite. It was like popping a balloon. Cell saw that although the Cell Junior were employing different tactics to try and break Goku's defense, they kept on getting launched to their deaths. Changing plans he started to charge his ki in a familiar motion. Kamehami. Suddenly all the Cell Junior stopped attacking and backed away jumping. As they jumped, they also put their hands to the side and charge up their ki. The miraculous blue light that emitted from each source shines brightly in his face. It was like looking at stars in the night sky. Deadly Ones. His hand went to the stop between his forehead as quick as he can, but how can Cell let him go that easily? Goku teleported to an outer edge Cell Jr., but the moment he did, all of the Cells teleported at the same time keeping Goku in the center. Welp, copycats are the worst. Like, be a little more original. Spinning in spot at torrential speed. He created his own wind cycle and eventually a tornado. It moved towards the edges before a cell junior before going back to the middle and did it several times. Ha! All the cells launched their came haim ha waves at the same time at the tornado. From top to the around him, there was no dead space for Goku to run out of and escape. Ah! Hearing the scream of his child. Cell looked over to where one of his juniors died unexpectedly. How did he die? He nearly found out for himself when a key beam took a chunk of his hip with it into the beyond. Struggling to keep a hold, he had to wait for his regeneration factor to kick in. What? That key, it didn't feel like Goku, but one of my own. Looking at the tornado in the middle. That has to be the one causing this. What else can it be? Beams of light went in and beams of light went out just as deadly aiming randomly. Inside the tornado, Goku wasn't doing much at all. Even that was an understatement. All the tornado did was cover where he was and gave him ample room to dodge. The came haim has that were coming back were merely the product of two beams colliding and bouncing off of each other. Goku may influence some of them, but why use the effort? Stop the count. All of his cell juniors stopped firing, but as seamless as it could be, Goku sent out the rest of the key blasted he needed and destroyed the rest as they were exhausted. Fully healed seconds ago, Cell was ready for a second round. Goku however, knew better than indulge himself in the fight. I don't have much time left, I need to kill Cell right now. If I don't I am guaranteed to lose. Dash. Mom. Where are you? Bulla and Gohan barged into the house carrying a broken down 16. He had tried his best and used all his firepower without reserves, but Cell still got the best of him. 18 and 17 followed behind a little slow and reluctantly. It was quite awkward to act like nothing happened, but after Cell absorbed 21, 
her control over them dwindled enough for the androids to stomp the virus out. Kids. Has he broken again? What are you doing to him? Bulma walked out in her casual home clothes stretching after she took a quick nap to rejuvenate herself. She she also stepped out with curiosity behind her. Yeah. Dad is going up against this super baddie and he absorbed this other. Wait what? Out of nowhere, Cauliflower barged into the living room where they were talking. You said Goku is fighting a bad guy and he hasn't come back yet. Are you talking about those androids? Ah. Uh. Gohan looked over at the other two androids, Kaina. I need to go over there and help him. Tell Kale I will be right back. Why you can't? Dad told us not to intervene. She she chuckled at that respite. Your dad may be incredibly strong but he doesn't know everything. Go and help them. Bulma and I will fix 16. Cauliflower nodded. It felt like they all had a mental connection knowing what the other was thinking and feeling. A little strange but Cauliflower didn't question it and dashed off. Where has Cauliflower gone? Kale came barreling through where Cauliflower just came out of. No words were said, only everyone pointing at the open door that was swinging by the force it was open. Wait for me. Ah, science. Looking over where she felt eyes trained on her, Gohan and Bulla were looking at her with the biggest googly eyes they could muster. She she slapped herself while shaking her head. Dash. It's like he has infinite energy. Goku has already popped another Senzu bean to keep himself in the fight. Another five minutes thought Goku to himself. The battlefield was a mess with craters and Cell Jr. guts scattered. The more he fought Cell, even though he was beating him, he couldn't defeat him due to his natural abilities. To make matters worse, as they kept on the fight, Cell was getting more and more acclimated with his power gaining a boost in power. I just need one opening. Then I will blast him out of this world. Goku tripped Cell by pulling his ankle forward with his foot. With his other, he kicked him in the back as he fell down. Normally that would cripple or at least stall the other party, but Cell instead uses Goku's leg to balance and shot key blast accurately at his face. Swatting them away, Cell was once again in his face and they engaged in another slugfest. He needed a change in tactics. Solar Flare an old trick but works like a charm. Cell staggered back letting Goku push him back with more punches to his chest. Once a significant distance away, he charged his key to the side and got ready to fire. Came Haim. Still blind, Cell also put his hands on his side and powered up. His battle sense was top notch and he knew this was one of the only ways for him to survive. Ha. Their two beams met in the middle. One blew with yellow golden energy surrounding him. He pumped some of that energy into the Kame Haim Ha pushing forward his beam more while also turning his beam redder. Regaining his vision, Cell extracted the dark key he gained into his own Kame Haim Ha and infused it with his own beam corrupting its natural blue color with a purple black. It was met in the middle once again. Goku didn't know what else to do to increase his power. He had to try though. The earth was on the line. Stimulating his key into the transformative process instead of output, the advantage started going to sell. What's wrong? Feeling a little tired. Don't worry, I will put you into permanent sleep in my belly. Goku's key just went up and up as if in response to that taunt. Veins appeared every and even his animalistic eyes started to sporadically move around his eye. More. More power. Faint sparks of lighting started to surround Goku. It took an immense amount of effort and it still seemed so far but Goku kept pushing for it. Kman. 
The lighting connected to the ground and circled Goku while still being part of his body. Depleting fast, his key reserves were looking dire, to say the least. I, I don't think I can transform again. What else can I do? Maybe another Senzu and try Kamikaze. I have been meaning to go to the other world, this may be my perfect chance. Having trouble Kakarot. Never would have thought, the strongest Saiyan would struggle against vermin like him. Vegeta. Flying down creating a triangle with the other two, he had his arms crossed in his signature blue outfit. Goku noticed something different about him since he last saw him. The air around him changed even though he was talking the same. Has he changed this much in only one year? What Goku didn't know, was that this change was very recent. Recent as in this day recent. I will help you, only because I want revenge on this ugly bast asterisk road powering up. Goku was thoroughly surprised when he saw lighting around his character as he turned Super Saiyan indicating Vegeta's advancement. His level of progress was the same as him or faster even with Goku and his wish. A true prodigy. Vegeta put his hand together in front of him and started charging up yellowish key with lightning crackling all around. Final flash. Cell couldn't stop his beam now, or Goku's would disintegrate him. Vegeta's didn't look like a weak one either considering how much his power Skiro kitted. Opening his tail large enough, Cell jutted out a Cell Jr. and he quickly leaped into action. With a portion of his strength given to him, Cell's beam got weaker getting the two back into a stalemate. The Cell Jr. unleashed his Kamehameha to counter Vegeta and they both stopped right in the middle. Vegeta don't intervene. I thought you were supposed to be prideful or something. This is my fight. Don't stick your nose where it doesn't belong. Shut up you germ. He was about to spew more words until he noticed more key signatures show up. Cauliflower and Kale, who caught up arrived landing on the ground creating a T-shape from a bird's eye view. Looks like you need help K Carrot, I knew it. More science. For an extinct race, you sure bang like monkeys. You're just jealous, let's roast this man. Kale. Yes, Cauliflower. Cauliflower powered up into a Super Saiyan while Kale extracted some power from her wrath form. It wasn't nearly the same as its prime or even Super Saiyan, but once she got more control over it, she would be a force to reckon with. Crush Cannon. Resist Cannon. The red and green key combined for a swirl of fun headed towards Cell. Much to his chagrin, he created another Cell Junior to counter that beam too. Meeting it in the middle, Cell lost more momentum to Goku. Alright, now that that Saiyan is dealt with, I just need to kill Goku and kill them next. Phew, life as a supervillain is hard. Now then. Just as he was thinking that he felt two more behind him. Feeling the key behind as not that much, he felt he could barely make this to survive. Hey, Dad. Do you need help? It seems as if everyone already got their spot. Look, we are a square around cell throwing our beams at him, there is no way they could win. Yeah, but let's use the move, there is no reason not to. Okay sure, just don't mess it up this time. Yeah, yeah whatever. Distancing themselves from one another, they both got into a weird pose with their arms facing away from each other. Sliding toward each other while moving their hands. Counterclockwise, they were in perfect sync. Then in two swift motions of back and forth, their fingers touched in the middle covering them in a thin layer of key. Once that key was dispersed, what came out wasn't what came in. One being instead of two. Two voices instead of one. Insurmountable power of fusion. Hell yeah, we did it.
Man the power e feel is amazing. We can probably take down cell all by ourselves. Bullhun. Yes dad. Charging up their key, they also launched it into cell. Releasing another cell junior, he was trapped on all four sides with only his three cell JRS to support him. And from the looks of how close Goku's beam was to his face, he didn't know how much longer he had. Look around cell it's over. You, who have thrown and abandoned all of your fellow androids for power. It has left you all alone while surrounded by members of my race. I would say learn from your mistakes but you won't be able to do much thinking in the overworld. Damn you Goku and all you treacherous scions. I swear I will come back for revenge, find a way. Always look behind your shoulder or your family might be gone the next instance. Ha ha ha. Goku had enough of this maniac. Pushing his key a little more, Cell's hands were getting burned. The next second, his control broke and the blast enveloped his body. His outline was visible as he was floating in the key lifelessly. The Cell JRS was next to go on all sides at the same time as their leader who was giving them power was down. Cross the streams. They did just that. All four blasts converged in the middle creating a massive ball of key in the middle destroying anything within it. All the way down to the very last cell. That's it guys. Hope you like the video. Like share and subscribe the channel and also make sure you tell me your recommendation in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.